How's it going, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with my college football week nine prediction video. And uh, actually, there's not that many good games this week. There's not really one good game, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I looked at the lineup for the next two weeks, and these these next two weeks suck big time. So, so that sucks. But um, I'm still gonna come here and predict each game. And I do want to say I'm sorry that I didn't upload my Friday questions and answers video. I'm going to record that right after this, and I'll upload that tomorrow. So uh, I'll be uploaded soon. I'm trying to to watch a little bit of to make this video and watch the end of this Colts Broncos game. It's coming down to the wire. That's that's for sure. But uh, okay, let's jump into these picks. Tuesday we have Louisiana Lafayette at Arkansas State. Two of the better teams in the Sun Belt Conference, two to the uh, preseason favorites to win the conference, two have really good quarterbacks. Louis, sorry, my dog's barking. Please disregard that. Louisiana Lafayette with the quarterback, Terrence Broadway, can run the football, can throw the football, ha is really explosive. At the quarterback position, you have Adam Kennedy at Arkansas State. He can make all the throws. He can run a little bit, too, uh, not as much as Broadway can. But also, they have one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the D Sunbelt and David Oku. He's a transfer from Tennessee and he's he can do everything at the running back position. But um I think if you're gonna go Arkansas State, I believe they have pretty much just better talent overall. Uh they have I think more studs on the defensive side of the football. So I'm gonna go Arkansas State at home and a close victory. I really wish my dog would show up. Uh thirty five to thirty two, Arkansas State over Louisiana Lafayette. All right, Thursday night you have Kentucky at Mississippi State, two of the worst teams in the SEC going at it uh, Thursday night. Uh man. Kentucky, this is probably their only chance to win an SEC game all season. So they're going to be fired up. I mean, both teams are going to be fired up. Anything can happen on Thursday night, like I always say. Uh, Dan Prescott or Jalen Whitlow. I'm not sure if Jalen Whitlow is back or not. I know he got injured in the Alabama game. Uh, I'm not sure how serious it was, but you have Maxwell Smith come in. He's he's pretty good there at Kentucky. They have some good talent, but I think uh, overall Mississippi State, a uh, better team, better defense, uh, can run the football and playing at home, which is a really tough home field environment. I'm gonna go Mississippi State and the Cowbells. Uh, close though, pretty close. I'll go 31 to 24 Mississippi State over Kentucky. All right, Marshall at Middle Tennessee. Um, both teams can score a lot of points. Both teams have pretty good quarterbacks. Logan Kilgore, Middle, Middle Tennessee, and Marshall has Brakeem Cato, which I believe. I don't know. I'm not sure if he's an NFL starter down the road, but I do think he'll serve as a good backup in the NFL. He's, he's he can he can light up the scoreboard. He's just he's just he's too small. I think he's listed as six foot barely, but he can throw the football around. That's for sure. Uh, I think Marshall can throw the football a little bit better than Middle Tennessee. I think they overall have a better offense. I remember last year, Kim Cato, like halfway through the season, hadn't thrown a pick yet. It was him and Geno Smith battling out for the last starting quarterback to throw a pick, and that was Kim Cato to do so. But, uh, man, who to pick? Who to pick? Uh, Middle Tennessee's played some tough competition for them, at least. Uh, Logan Kilgore's done for a thousand yards. I think I'm think I'm gonna go Marshall. I think Raheem Cato is gonna lead him to a victory. Very good quarterback there. Uh, if you get a chance to watch this game, watch it because you'll be really impressed by Raheem Cato. So I'm gonna go Marshall by a touchdown, a high scoring game, 42 to 35, 40, 42 to 35 over Middle Tennessee. Next we have Boise State at BYU on Friday night. Boise State, we all know they're always a good school. They always got a good team. Uh, not not the amazing team that they've had in years past there at Boise. Uh, but it's still a competitive team that I have, believe has a good chance to win the Mountain West Conference if Fresno State can slip up down the road. They did lose head-to-head -to, -head to Fresno State, but uh, they ha they have the talent to do so. And BYU, another team very talented, coming off a crazy, crazy one-point win against Houston last week. Uh, I was wishing Houston would have won that game because that would have made Houston rank, and that would have made another team up there that's unbeaten that everybody's getting mad at because, oh, they play a terrible schedule. But, hey, I've, I've explained myself too many times. Uh, dealing with that, but um, anyways, I do think BYU wins this game. I think they have the better talent on defense. They didn't haven't really showed it lately. I mean, giving up four, was it 46 points to Houston, but they they have talent. They have a uh, Calvin Noy in the front seven. He'll be a top 10 NFL pick, I believe. Uh, 
Boise State has a good running back. I can't think of his name right now. Joe Southwick's a, a quality quarterback, which I, I I do think they'll put up some points in BYU, but I, I think it's it's pretty big here. BYU's playing at home. It's a tough environment playing at home against Boise. The fans are going to come out prime time on Friday night. Uh, very uh, I trust Taysom Hill. I trust he can beat Boise in a close, high scoring game. I think I know I, I'm kind of second guessing myself because I did say that they have a good defense. But uh, they have good talent. There's a difference between having a good defense and having a lot of talent on defense. They have a lot of talent on defense, but they haven't really played together yet. But with that said, I'm going to BYU, BYU 45 to 42 over Boise State. It's going to be a thriller. It's going to be a fun one. All right, Saturday you have the first game, Wake Forest going into Miami to play the number seven Miami Hurricanes. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm not real sure if they're they're necessarily the the seventh best team in the country, but hey, I mean they're undefeated. They beat some pretty good opponents. You can't do anything but rank them that high, and they they're deserving of it. I mean, playing against the top ten teams right now, I'm not sure how they fare, but I mean they're completely deserving of their ranking right now. They had to fight fight back with that win against North Carolina last week. All good teams have to face adversity, so. Hey, they uh, they 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 came out strong. They're undefeated, and they're right up in there. And then, I mean, they can be at Florida State in a couple of weeks. Miami could be in the national championship discussion. I mean, they are right now. And, I mean, top ten in the country, undefeated. Um, Wake Forest. They I don't understand what the deal with is with Wake Forest. They come out one week and look absolutely horrible. The next week they come out and shock you. I mean, they lost to Louisiana. Louisiana Monroe earlier in the season, and then they come out and beat these mid-tier ACC teams, and they get blown out the next week. But they're still looking, they're looking, looking pretty good. Like uh, for example, um, they're on a two-game win streak right now. They lost, were blown out by Clemson, barely squeaked, squeaked by Army. Uh, didn't look too impressive, impressive against Presbyterian. Lost to Boston College, lost to Louisiana Monroe, like I said, but they got two good wins, quality wins over Maryland and North Carolina State. So Wake Forest is, is pulling some some momentum. I mean, uh, Tanner Price is a good quarterback, and all really, their offense really depends on what they call. I mean, if they, I think I've said this before many a times, if they call the read option type stuff that they're trying to force onto to Tanner Price, it's not going to work out. But they have talent, they really do. Tanner Price is a heck of a quarterback. Josh Harris is a, a quality running back and have a really good uh, wide receiver in the slot. And Michael Campanera, who uh, just saw Wes Welker make a big catch here in this Denver Broncos uh, Colts game. Uh, but he's he's really comparable to Wes Welker. Um, so they have some talent. So if they come out and they play play an A game, they can give Miami a fight and they can bring it down to the wire. Are they going to do so? I, I wouldn't go that far. So, um... I think Miami's just too much. They have young, fast defensive players, talent all all over all over the field. Duke Johnson, um, Stephen Morris, good wide receivers. Miami will get the win. Maybe a little bit closer than people think, but I'll go Miami thirty four, Wake Forest twenty four. Next we have Oklahoma State at Iowa State. Oklahoma State's trying to Trying to uh, squeak their way up back in the top 25, Paul. They're at number 19 right now. Uh, Iowa State, man, is coming off that complete obliteration by, uh, ooh, somebody fumbled? Who fumbled? Did the Colts get it back? I don't know, but coming off that complete obliteration last week at the hands of Baylor. But Iowa State, they're looking pretty good. They had that one slip up against West Virginia earlier on in the season. Um, the Colts to get the football. Wow. Uh, okay, what was, what was I talking about, Frick? Um, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Iowa State. Don't give up on Oklahoma State yet. They had that one bad game against West Virginia. So they think they can be competitive in the Big 12 and uh, beat the best in the Big 12, which is uh, not real clear who they are right now. But Anyways, I think they can handle Iowa State very easily. Their defense looked pretty bad last week. So I'm going to go Oklahoma State big. 45? No, I'm not sure. Oklahoma State hasn't really had that explosive 50-point-a-game offense like they've had in years past, but it's still a good offense. So, I don't know if I want to go in the 40s. I'll give them 30, 38. I'll go 38 to just 20. 
38 to 20. Oklahoma State at over Iowa State. Next, Louisville at South Florida. Louisville dropped all the way to number 20, and I hate it for him. I love Louisville. Love Teddy Bridgewater. Nothing, nothing he can do in that game. He played his heart out, and uh, just some misfortunes for Louisville that allowed UCF to come back late in the game and win that one. There's nothing they can really do there. That's a good UCF team. Don't discount them. I mean, they almost they're they're one loss in the season is to a South Carolina team by one point. And, uh, that, that was lucky that South Carolina, South Carolina came back in that game. I mean, if Central Florida wins that game, uh, Louisville might only drop to like 15, and Central Florida's probably in the top 10 right now. Uh, so, anyways, with that said, South Florida's not good. They've, they've, uh, they've had a couple wins lately. They looked absolutely terrible at the beginning of the year. They came out, and I believe they beat Cincinnati. And that was a complete shocker to me. I was thinking Cincinnati's going to win that game by 50 points. But, uh, I mean, coming off a loss, you you gotta you can't expect Louisville to play their A game. I think they come out and look a little bit sluggish, uh, playing in that sleepy environment in Tampa Bay. Uh, there's not gonna be many fans show up. I mean, South Florida's not having a good season. They don't have many people show up, uh, anyways, regardless of a bad season. But uh, with that all that said, Louisville, Teddy Bridgewater will not let them lose two in a row. I believe they go easily go undefeated the rest of the way. Uh, Louisville. Uh, I'll go Louisville by 28 points. I'm going to go Louisville 42, uh, South Florida 14. All right, Connecticut at Central Florida, like I just mentioned. Central Florida only jumped up to 23, and that's, that's I mean, I know it's kind of, there's a fine line between dropping a team so far after they lose to an opponent, but I mean, Central Florida just beat Louisville. Why? How can you reason that Central Florida should not be ranked higher than Louisville after they just played head to head? I mean, Louisville's 23. I mean, Louisville's 20. UCF is 30. I mean, what the freak? It's 23. Like, how can you how can you reason that? I mean, that makes no sense whatsoever. But anyways, with that said, Connecticut is absolutely horrible, winless thus far. Lost to a couple FCS schools, uh, lower tier. Uh, BCS schools, so uh, no problem for Central Florida in this game. They can score as many points as they want. Blake Bortles is a great quarterback. Storm Johnson is a great running back. Studs on the defense for Central Florida. And I have them winning by, man, I, I can say another four touchdown victory here, maybe more. Uh, let's go 45 to, 45 to 17. Central Florida over Connecticut. Next, we have Nebraska at Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota shocked the country last week, beating beating Northwestern. That one came to me came to me as a surprise. Uh, but I don't think they have what it takes to beat Nebraska. Taylor Martinez scores a lot of points. That offense is good. Kenny Bell, great wide receiver. Amir Abdullah, a speedy, tricky running back. Defense, though, Nebraska is not really what you what you would expect, uh, so to say. But uh. With all I said, they they should handle Minnesota. Nobody in that Minnesota offense is really what I would consider explosive. So, uh, with the with the con of Nebraska's team being their defense, there's not much in Minnesota's offense that really can can uh, take advantage of that. So Nebraska, another pretty big victory. I go by three touchdowns. Nebraska 42, Minnesota 21. Houston at Rutgers. Houston, I believe, even though they lost last week, BYU is a pretty good team. There were so many doubters because Houston has played a pretty uh, not-so-great schedule up to date before the BYU game. But, I mean, they, they look good. I mean, I, they competed, lost by one point. So it shows that they're not a team that this this just should be thrown out of the water. They're still competitive, and I think they can beat Rutgers. I think they go into Rutgers, uh, get the win, close. So I'm still not sold on Rutgers whatsoever. Their offense is just I, I, Gary Nova is too inconsistent. I think Houston goes in here, shocks a couple people, wins a close one, 24 to 21 over Rutgers. All right, Ball State at Akron. Akron got the win last week. I, I predicted that one. And Ball State got a win as well. They can throw the football around. I say that every single video because that's it's the truth. But yeah, they actually got a win last week, and that was that kind of surprised me. I mean, that didn't surprise me because they played Miami, Ohio, who is winless thus far. But uh, they still won, which Akron when you see Akron win, you're like, what? 
but when you see who they played, you're like, oh, okay. But uh, Ball State, I believe, should win this game comfortably. Good quarterback, Keith winning. They can throw the football around, like I said. Good offense there, Ball State. Uh, they'll be competing for the MAC. Uh, that's probably Northern Illinois' toughest game left in the season against Ball State. But uh, Ball State, two touchdown, three touchdown victory, uh, 38 to 14. 38 to 14 over Akron. Next, we have Northwestern at Iowa. Northwestern, what happened, man? A uh, team that should have should have beat Ohio State. They get pounded by Wisconsin and they get beat by Minnesota. I think I actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think I actually um, predicted last week the Minnesota game with Northwestern was going to be close because coming off of two emotional losses. I mean, that's, I mean, people don't really take into consideration emotional losses, wins. I mean, that affects the team greatly. I think I, I mentioned this all last week, too. But um, I think they go into Iowa. Iowa coming off a loss against Ohio State really battled. But I think this is a game Northwestern can finally come back and win. I think I will, will bring it down to the wire. They can run the football. Mark Wiseman, man, he's one of my favorite players in college football. He's awesome. But uh, they competed. They have some talented players on the offensive side of the football. The defense is pretty solid at Iowa. But this is one of those matchups when you got speed at Northwestern against traditional, I don't know if you want to say slow, but uh, kind of slow, traditional, big defensive players at Iowa. Your t prototypical, stereotypical Big Ten defense and team as well, uh, as a whole, really. But I think speed outmatches them here. Kane Coulter, whoever plays quarterback, Trevor Simeon, Fenrick Mark will get a couple big plays against that slow defense, get a win by a touchdown. I'll go 28 to 21 Northwestern over Iowa. Next we have Vandy at Texas A&M. Johnny Manziel is not gonna let them lose two in a row. Simple as that. Uh, Vanderbilt got the one against Georgia last week. Don't know how it happened. They had to have a couple trick plays. They got a fake field goal for a touchdown. Got some turnovers. Um, and if I don't want to try to try to uh, gloat or anything, but my preseason video for the SEC when I did all the preseason prediction videos for each conference, how the conferences were going to end up, I even said I predicted that Vanderbilt was going to beat Georgia, and I was called crazy by everybody. Hey. Got it right. New Vandy was going to ha have a big upset somewhere and just happened to be last week. But with that said, Vanderbilt not, does not have the defense to contain Johnny Manziel and that offense. Nobody has the defense to contain Johnny Manziel, Mike Evans, and everybody in that offense. Um, this could be a complete blowout. I do not think Vandy has the players to keep up with a and uh, I believe... To a point, anybody can score on an A&M, so uh, I think Vandy can score some points, but A&M, I believe, will go off in this game. Mike Evans should have a big game plan at home. They don't want to lose two in a row, and uh, they want to have some type of chance at miraculously praying that they can still have a shot to win the SEC West, but I don't see it happening. Uh, but, but but I don't see it happening, but they win this game. Um uh, pretty big, I think. I think they can score 50 points if they need to. But I don't think they'll need to, but I'll go pretty close to 50 points. I'll go 48 to 31. 48 to 31, A&M of Brandy. Next, we have Georgia Tech at Virginia. And I love my pick last week over Syracuse, uh, Georgia Tech over Syracuse, because I mentioned something that I, I believe to be con con uh, completely true. Uh, I said Georgia Tech is one of those teams that either either uh, loses the game or they absolutely blow out their opponent, and that that can be true. They either lose, they don't win by a little bit. They they win by twenty. They won fifty six to nothing last week against over Syracuse, which is a quality a ACC opponent. So um, there's that. But Virginia last week I beat by Duke. They were up twenty two nothing. Duke came roaring back and won that game. Emotional loss. Duke coming off a Duke's still trying to compete for the ACC and like A&M trying to have an outside shot at getting a getting a chance at uh, Florida State or uh, Clemson, whoever ends up winning the ACC, Coastal Atlantic, whatever division that is. But uh, Georgia State gets the win. I'm not sold up Virginia whatsoever. On Virginia whatsoever, sorry. But uh, Georgia State scored enough points. They'll win easy. Uh, 45 to 21 over Virginia. Next, we have Pittsburgh at Navy. And my prediction, man, it was. Hold on a sec. Um, they, 
my 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 upset prediction of my my life almost came true last week. Um, I said Old Dominion was going to beat Pittsburgh. Old Dominion's a team that uh, is two years away from being an FBS level opponent, or a year I don't know, so another season away or something like that. But I predicted that they were going to beat Pittsburgh, and they were up to a ten nothing lead. And Pittsburgh had a huge second quarter, and uh, Old Dominion battled to the very end. They lost. What was it? It was 35 to 24, but uh, I mean, hey, nobody predicted a, a FCS or whatever they are now, FBS independent team. I don't know what the frick they are. Um, to go in and compete with Pittsburgh, and they did. I did, but what else did? But uh, anyways, with that out of the way, that's fun. It always seems like the two teams. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Uh. It seems like two teams I always talk about end up being back-to-back -back prediction videos because you have Pittsburgh at Navy, Old Dominion at North Fork State, but Pitt at Navy. Um, I think Pitt can win. Navy's going to compete. It's going to be one of those odd, low-scoring type games. Uh, I mean, Navy plays pretty good defense. or offense is uh, one. It's kind of like Georgia Tech's one game they'll either lose by a ton or or uh, come out and showcase and run for 400 yards. But Pittsburgh pretty much plays. A solid defense against a run. They like to they they run the football at you. They'll stop the run. That's just how they are. They're a physical team, and that's what how um how they're coached and how they how they do things in Pittsburgh. So I think they go into uh, Annapolis and get the win. But like I said, it's gonna be a low scoring, odd type type scoring game. So I'm gonna go Pitt. Oh, let's go Pitt. Pitt 24, Navy 7, 17. Somewhere in that range. Alrighty. Uh, Old Dominion at North Fork State. Old Dominion can score 70 points. Taylor Hen Henneke is an amazing quarterback. And uh, I think he, as long as he's there, which I think is one more year after this year, he can help his team, Old Dominion, com compete with anybody. But they'll blow out North Fork State, no problem. I'll go. I'll give him 60 points for real. I'll go 62 to 14. 62 to 14 over North Fork State. Alright, Miami, Ohio at Ohio. Uh, as long as Miami, Miami Ohio is as winless in the season, how can you pick for him? So Ohio has a good quarterback though. Charles Tuttle can score some points. They did last week. They got the win, scored 45, I think, and so finally their first offensive outburst of the season. But with that said, Ohio huge. I'll give them 45 again. I'll go 45 to 17 Ohio over Miami Ohio. Toledo at Bowling Green. Uh, I think I'll give it to Toledo. Terrence Owens is a good quarterback. They have some good that good explosive players on offense. Bowling Green has their fair share of explosive players as well, but I think Toledo has the better quarterback. Terrence Owens, he'll lead him to a victory. So I'm going to go Toledo. Uh, 30, 35-27 over Bowling Green. All right. Um, Next we have uh, well where are we at West Western Michigan at Massachusetts Massachusetts is one of those not so great schools either um that's who I actually predicted to beat Miami Ohio last week I believe I'm not sure but uh, Western Michigan man they're 0 and 8 did not know that they weren't the greatest team in the world. But yeah, they're 0 and 8 with a loss against Nickel State, which is the FCS level program. Lost to Buffalo a few weeks back, 33 to nothing. Um, and UMass, yeah, they did beat Miami Ohio. That was two weeks ago though. So uh, I can't, I can't give as much. I want to be able to predict the first one of the season for Western Michigan. I can't. Massachusetts, I believe, will go in here. They have a win. They'll play like they have a win. Western Michigan will play like they don't have a win. So uh, Western Michigan in a loss over UMass in front of about 20 fans in Gillette Stadium. Uh, Massachusetts 17, Western Michigan 14. Okay, next we have kind of keep my eye on this game. It's 30. It's over. It's over. Uh, Temple at SMU. Temple finally got a win last week against Army, but it was against Army. Um, it seems like if you're a team that's struggling for a win, you go and play one of those uh, 
play one of the academies, and that's when you can get your win. But anyways, uh, SMU can be able to score enough points, they'll win. I think it'll it'll be enough. Uh, they, they, their offense will, will score a ton of points against Temple. Sorry, my brain's kind of scattered in a bunch of different places. But anyways, SMU over Temple. Uh, Garrett Gilbert, good quarterback, good offense. They'll explode in this game, 45 to 21 over Temple. Tennessee at number one, Alabama. Tennessee's been impressive. Uh, they really have lately. I mean, looking pretty good. They came so close to beating Georgia, then they come beat uh, South Carolina. So they are. They have been impressive. Been looking pretty good. But there's no way they'll beat Alabama. Playing in Tuscaloosa, the crowd will be there. Um, I mean, it's third at Saturday in October. It's a uh, it's a rivalry, and Alabama's won this game eight years in a row, and they'll make it nine or however many it is. But uh, with that said, um, Justin Willie's really been playing pretty good football, but he won't do it against our secondary. Our secondary our defense is too good. They won't run the football. They do have a good offensive line, so I think there's one area we'll struggle with is pass rush. But our secondary will allow for covered sacks. Not necessarily sacks, but pr enough pressure to force bad throws and interceptions. And we'll win comfortably. Um, 42 to f 42 to 4. Over Tennessee. All right, North Carolina State at Florida State. I would love for North Carolina State to win this game, but I don't see it happening. Uh, Florida State, man, they um, this is the game they lost a season ago. They're gonna be ready for it. They're, they want revenge. They're not gonna lose this game twice in a row. Uh, it's gonna be fine. Florida State. They look so great under Jameis Winston. He looks unstoppable. But Florida State should win this game big. 40, 45 to 20 over North Carolina State. Clemson at Maryland. Coming off an emotional loss, Clemson has not looked good the last two weeks. They lost bad last week. We all know that. It was, it was, it was embarrassing. And the week before that, uh, struggled mightily with Boston College. Their offense has, has looked so bad. I've said from the beginning, for all the people uh, saying that Todd Boyd is the better quarterback, the best quarterback going next year's draft, heck no. He, he I, I was never big on EJ Manuel. Todd Boyd reminds me completely of EJ Manuel. Todd Boyd or and EJ Manuel would never impress me whatsoever, and he's he reminds me a lot of him in the way he, not the way he plays, but the way he's so hyped and he doesn't put up the numbers when he has to, and so on and so forth. Maryland coming off a loss as well. At the hands of uh, who was it last week? They lost to Maryland. Lost to Wake Forest last week, and Clemson coming off an emotional loss <clears throat> playing in Maryland. Uh, I'm gonna pull the upset here. Clemson. They. I, I've already emphasized how much I I, I take into consideration emotional losses, emotional games, and they just have not looked good. They look, didn't look good against Boston College. Why well, expect them to look good against Maryland? Maryland's not a bad team. They've not been playing well. Uh, both teams got obliterated by Florida State, Maryland a little more than Clemson, but playing at home, I'm going to go with the upset. Uh, C.J. Brown and Stephon Br uh, Diggs has a little explosive combination there, so I'm going to go Maryland in an upset. Um, if Clemson does find a way to win, it won't be by a lot, I don't think. So Maryland in an upset win, uh, 31-28 over Clemson. Next we have Texas Tech at Oklahoma. And it all depends on what Oklahoma team comes out and plays this game. Um, hold on, sorry. Um, Texas Tech at Oklahoma. Oklahoma, they look one week like a good team. Next week, come out and lose by, by 70 by uh, to Texas. So it's a. Uh, it depends what team comes out and sorry I am getting completely bombarded with text messages so and I gotta talk about something important here so um okay uh sorry I have something to discuss here with somebody so I'm gonna go through these last picks without any explanation because I gotta got some stuff to do. So sorry but with that said gotta kinda get get done here. Um Texas Tech which Oklahoma State, Oklahoma team will come out. Uh, Texas Tech will find a way to win. 
24 to 21 over Oklahoma. Texas Tech's not looking, not looked really impressive in their wins, but they're winning. That's all that matters. They found ways to win. And I'm going to Oklahoma, uh, Tech over Oklahoma. Sorry, I, my brain scattered, man. 24 to 21. Uh, Duke, Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech, um, 27 to 17 over Duke. Eastern Michigan at Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois, big. Jordan Lynch will have a ton of yards on the ground. Uh, 40, 42 to 17 over Eastern Michigan. Boston College at North Carolina. North Carolina will get their second one of the game, uh, second one of the season this game. Boston College has looked pretty good against the Florida States and Clemson, but I think Carolina finds a way to win. Uh, Ed Bronze, a great tight end. Bryn Renner is a good quarterback, a good offense, and they'll score, uh, outscore Boston College 38-31. Um, to 31. North Carolina with the win. UTEP at Rice. Rice, great offense. They'll get the win 42-30 to 30 over UTEP. Michigan State at Illinois. It'll be all about defense in this game. Illinois is a team that can score points, but Michigan State has a really impressive defense. So Michigan State, uh, you know, Another weird scoring game, 21 to 17 over Illinois. Illinois keep it close because they have a good offense, but Michigan State can't score. But they'll just find a way. They'll find a way to win. Michigan State 21, Illinois 17. Buffalo at Kent State. Got to see Kent State in person last week. Did not look good, even though their starting quarterback was out. But Dre Archer is a great running back, but their defense and this team, aside from Dre Archer and Trey Young Dur Durham, is is not too impressive anymore. And Buffalo's been scoring some points. Buffalo. Buffalo gets the win, 35 to 21 over Kent State. Tulsa at Tulane. Tulsa, Cody, uh, Cody Green, good quarterback over Nick Montana of Tulane, gets the win, 34-31. West Virginia at Kansas State. West Virginia gets another win in Big 12 here, I believe. It'll be close, but I have a feeling West Virginia will find a way to win. Um, Kansas State's been playing tough. They're getting better and better. But still not sold on that that quarterback Daniel Sams or whoever ends up playing Jake Waters whoever. But West Virginia 34 over 34 to 31 over Kansas State. Utah USC US Utah has been looking extremely impressive. They really have. They, they got came out and uh got beat last week by Arizona. But the weeks before that they beat Stanford. They brought it down to the wire against UCLA. And I mean hey it could be something to do with those emotional games and they. Came off an emotional win against Stanford. Thought they were too good for Arizona, and they lost. So that I mean, USC is a different story. They're big power. Um, well, big power traditionally, not necessarily this season, but they're big power nonetheless. Uh, they'll they'll be ready for this game. Travis Wilson, I expect to have a field day against USC's defense. So I'm gonna go to Utah. Uh, no no doubt about it. Utah 34 21 over USC. Troy at Western Kentucky. I think Bobby Petrino on that offense will be able to compete. Beat Troy. Uh, big reason I'm picking this game because Troy almost lost to Georgia State a couple weeks ago. Georgia State's horrible. Sole reason I'm picking Western Kentucky in this game. Western Kentucky 35, Troy 24. Notre Dame at Air Force. Uh, when you're playing an academy school, watch out. I mean, this is at Air Force. They'll be ready. They'll be ready for this game and expect another one of those odd scoring games, but Notre Dame just way too much for Air Force. Just way, way too much. Um, defensively and offensively, just. Talent level is just off the charts compared to Air Force. But expect them to play hard, but I'll go to Notre Dame 27 to 13 over Air Force. UAB at UTSA. UTSA, Roadrunners, good offense. U UAB is just, just not competitive anymore. Or they've not really been competitive, competitive in a long, long time. So UTSA 34 to 24 over UAB. Louisiana Tech at Florida International. Florida National is extremely, extremely bad. North uh, Louisiana Tech's not that great themselves, but um, not many people, not many teams in this country that Florida National can beat. So I'm gonna go Louisiana Tech, uh, 35 to 20 over Florida National. UNLV at Nevada. Nevada can score a lot of points. Good quarterback in Cody Spajardo. They'll score enough points. They'll win, uh, 42 to 21 over UNLV. Next we have UCLA at Oregon. Um. All right. Uh, oh, wait one second. Let me send this text message real quick. All right. Um, 
UCLA at Oregon. UCLA really, really disappointed me last week. I mean, they competed with Stanford, but the, their offense, I don't know what happened to them, man. And to play Oregon, you're going to have to score some points in offense. So, as much as I want to see Oregon go down, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, they're playing at night. Game day is going to be there. Uh, Austin Stadium, an insane environment. So, I think you know, UCLA will compete, but UCLA, uh, Oregon will wind up getting the win. No problem. Um, as much as I want UCLA to win. I just, I don't, after last week's performance, before last week, I thought it was a possibility, but uh, seeing their offense just kind of sputter around like they did, Oregon 45-24 over UCLA. South Carolina at Missouri. Um, South Carolina still ranked, I don't know how. Um, but uh, South Carolina at Missouri. Sorry. Um, why you can't pick against Missouri? I mean, so many things can can go South Carolina's way. Uh, so many things you you can point out and say South Carolina's gonna win this game. Uh, Missouri's not for real. They beat uh, a pounded uh, Georgia team, a, a obliterated team. They got a, a, a fluke win there, and they played a Florida team without their starting quarterback. Uh, horrible offense. You can say so many things, but hey, man, they're playing at night. They have all the momentum. They're number five in the country. They're not going to lay down. They're going to be playing great from here on out. Matty Mock, I believe, is, is just as good per, um just as good productivity wise as James Frank James Franklin is. It just took him a while to get into the groove of things. And go Missouri South Carolina won't make it easy. They're gonna it'll be down to the last last minute game. But Missouri, why? How are you gonna pick against them with everything that's been going their way lately? So Missouri, uh thirty one to twenty seven over South Carolina. Baylor at Kansas and dear God, this will be an obliteration. Baylor can they score 60 points again? Why not? They've done it four or five times this season. They've scored 70, like three, four times. So Baylor, huge, 65 to 24 for Kansas. Furman at LSU, enough said. LSU, heck, uh, 45 to 10 for Furman. Wyoming at San Jose State. Wyoming disappointed me last week. Uh, Brett Smith didn't have his greatest game. They got obliterated by Colorado State. I think they get beat by another state team. I think uh, two really good quarterbacks, David Fowles of San Jose State and, and uh, Brett Smith of Wyoming. I think San Jose State at home with David Fowles uh, tears a, picks apart that Wyoming defense and wins, um, 42 to 34 over Wyoming. South Alabama at Texas State. Um, All right, um, South Alabama will get the win. Their offense has been playing really well. We've been actually very competitive lately. Texas State, not so great. Uh, so South Alabama, uh, 35 to 24 over Texas State. Uh, Louisiana Monroe over Georgia State, big. Georgia State's just bad, 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 bad. So 45 to, to 14 over Georgia State. North Texas over Southern Miss, who's been has the country's longest losing streak by far. So North Texas, good offense. They should obliterate Southern Miss. I'll go 45 to uh, 10. 45 to 17 over Southern Miss. Florida Atlantic at Auburn. This will be another blowout. Um, Auburn uh, 52, Florida Atlantic 14. Idaho at Ole Miss, another blowout. Uh, 52 to 10 over Idaho. Texas at TCU. Um, Texas has been finding ways to win. It'll be tough for them, but they they looking they're looking constantly uh, a little bit better at a time. So Texas finds a way to beat TCU 20, 27 to twenty four in a close one. Penn State at Ohio State. Much as I would love to see Ohio State go down, I don't see it happening. Penn State, um, Penn State should get the win. Um, no problem. Uh, what the heck was that? Sorry, my my brain is scattered, guys. Uh, it's eleven o'clock. My brain is scattered. I'm tired. I don't know what the frick I'm talking about, but let's just forget what I just said. And uh, Ohio State, as much as I want them to, lo to lose, don't see it happening. Playing at home against Penn State. Penn State's been competitive, though, in their games lately. They even beat Michigan. But uh, I just I don't see it happening. I, I don't see it happening. Uh, the defense isn't what it needs to be to beat a, a high-powered, fast offense in uh, uh, Ohio State. Carlos Hyde's an extremely good running back. He should have a field day against Penn State's defense. 
So we have Ohio State 34 to 21 over Penn State. Arizona at Colorado. Arizona win their second straight game. They beat a good Utah team last week. Colorado is not the best Pac-12 team by any means. So uh, why pick Colorado over, over Arizona right after Arizona got a big win last week? So Arizona, I think they can win this game by at least two touchdowns. So I'll go 38 to 24 over Colorado. Albanine, Al Albalini Christian at New Mexico State. I don't even know how to pronounce that. So New Mexico State, even though they haven't won a game yet, but Abilene Christian, only I'm never whatever New Mexico State 38 to 20 over Abilene Christian. Uh, Stanford at Oregon State. Uh, I do want to pick an upset here. I think Stanford's a very good team, but I think Oregon State can sling the ball around a lot. They have a great quarterback in Sean Mannion, putting up insane stats. The running back there for Oregon State is impressive, extremely impressive. Uh, might be one of the most underrated wide receivers in the country. Can't think of his name right now, but he's, he's great. I watched some of his uh, film, actually. He looks really good. Good running back. Even though they, they haven't ran the ball that well, but they're, they're throwing the ball around like crazy. Um, Stanford struggled on offense last week. Uh, I don't expect that to be a case again because Oregon State's defense isn't isn't too impressive. But playing at home at night in front of a crazy crowd, I mean it's it's, it's crazy there in Corvallis. They 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 uh they know how to they know how to throw a party. They do. Um, but it really comes down. It's going to be a high scoring game. I really do believe so. I think Oregon State can. They're such an underrated offense, the number one passing offense in the country, and that's crazy thinking all the passing offenses passing offenses that's around the country now. But they're number one. Sean Manion's number one in passing yards, uh, efficiency, uh, touchdowns, uh, interception ratio, etc. Name all the stats. He's number one, or at least top top two, top three. So Oregon State in a crazy upset game. They'll outscore Stanford. I'll go 38-35 to 35 over, over Stanford. Oregon State winning. Fresno State at San Diego, San Diego State. Fresno State continues their, their hopes of an undefeated season and a BCS bowl berth, which I think is extremely possible. I think it's going to happen. Uh, Fresno State 45, San Diego State 30. No, no. Fresno State 45, San Diego State 20. There you go. Great quarterback, Derek Carr. He'll score enough points to win. Cal at Washington. Washington lost last week, guys. I actually picked that game. Uh, I knew Arizona State was coming out. They're a great team. Was getting no love in Washington State. I mean, Washington's came off a bunch of uh, emotional losses, and uh, but they, they won't lose to Cal. Um, I think three in a row was uh, enough, and they'll come out and be the, the Cal team, which is not does not have the best defense in the world. So keep pricing that offense. Bishop Sankey should have a big game playing at home. Uh, they'll finally find a way to win, and uh, they'll be all right. So Washington, 42-30 to 30 over Cal. And next, Colorado State at Hawaii. Colorado State's a very, very impressive fundamental team. Jim McElwain shows he's uh, using the, the Nick Saban uh values and and um play style that he that he uh learned there under Saban and they're playing fundamental fundamentally sound good running game uh efficient quarterback good defense so Colorado State over Hawaii um pretty big I'll I'll go 35 to 17 so that's it guys hope you enjoyed sorry my brain was scattered it's late I have things to do text messages rolling in controversy about to be on my phone Broncos game. I was sorry. This is probably one of my worst prediction videos. I'm I'm, I'm really sorry. I can I can already kind of tell. But uh, it'll be better next week. I hope. I hope. But that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about my stupid predictions in the comment section below. Um, if you disagree with anything, let me know. If you didn't understand anything, which I, I completely understand because I I don't understand half the things I said either because I was so scatterbrained. But that's it, guys. Until next time. Uh, have a great day. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash s3rtr. Have a great day. As always, peace.